Good morning, everybody. I'd like to call to order the City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement hearing for June 17th, 2020. My name is Keith Davis. I'm the special magistrate appointed by the city to preside over today's agenda. Uh, before we begin, if you'll please silence any um, cell phones so they don't interrupt our proceedings, that will be appreciated. Uh, if you're going to be speaking to me uh, about any of the matters on our agenda today, I need to place you under oath. Uh, I can do that all at once. So if you will be testifying, please stand, raise your right hands. Thank you. Do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. You can have a seat. Um, when your case is called, please come up to the podium to my right. Um, for each case, I will first hear from the city. Um, the city will present its case, which uh, will in, in all likelihood include testimony from um, the city's code enforcement staff. There may be photographs or, or other documents that are part of the record, um, which should be visible on the screens. Um, once I've heard from the city uh, in terms of uh, the case and any recommendations uh, for a resolution, I, I will then hear from you. Uh, and that will be the opportunity for you to tell me anything additional that you feel is uh, important about your case. If you have additional documents or photographs that you want me to look at, that will be the time to show them to me. And once I've heard everything from uh, everybody uh, on the case, in all likelihood, I will enter an order today that uh, resolves the matter in some form or fashion. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, and uh, I guess with the folks who are present. Matter number six, CE 2002-0258-4700 Broadway. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Right. Property at 4700 Broadway was cited on February 13, 2020. Notice of violation was posted at City Hall on February 14, 2020. Certified mail was sent on February 20, 2020. Property was cited for trash and debris, dumpster enclosure, and outdoor storage. I have made contact with the property manager. Um, as of this morning, the property is still not in compliance. Um, City is asking for daily fines of um, $500 from the time the violation was cited until today. This is a repeat offender. Tell me again the date the repeat violation was observed. On February 13th. And what is the um, case that makes this a repeat? Well, they've, they've been cited for outdoor storage and they're, it's all this trash and debris in the parking lot and the dumpster area, the, the, they cannot seem to get that, you know, under control. No, I, but what, so what was the case number for the previous case, and when did that come oh, into compliance? Man. While you're looking for that, let me go ahead and um, hear from the respondent. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Annie Hernandez. I am outside counsel for Family Dollar Stores, which is the tenant at the subject property. Um, I have, I understand, and I've been in communication with um, Officer Thompson as well as Supervisor Posner on this issue. I've been involved in this case since March of this year, and I understand from the city that this has been an ongoing problem going back possibly two years or more. However, my involvement is as of March. And I spoke to both gentlemen March 16th, and they had noted compliance at that time, after which the coronavirus situation exploded. Our stores have remained open throughout the whole time, and they've probably been more focused on, and I'm not making excuses for the situation in the exterior, but they've been more focused on serving the community, remaining open, keeping their employees safe, the patrons safe, and perhaps have not been on top of the exterior situation. I have been providing photographs taken by my district manager on a weekly basis for the last several weeks, and I understand that the city cannot comply the property based on my photographs, but for, uh, as an example, I sent photos on a Friday, then Officer Thompson sent me photos on a Monday coming off a weekend, everything was a mess again. Uh, the photos that I do have, I can 
certify to your honor that were taken by our management. It was Friday, June 11. Everything seemed neat, but I submit that a set of photographs is, captures you know, one moment in time. Um, so I would respectfully request that you give us an opportunity to rectify the situation now that I'm involved because I, I am on my client and on management on a weekly basis. I've spoken to Officer Thompson. He's given us his suggestions as to you know, the importance of maintaining consistency in picking up the trash, and we are looking into ways, whether it's additional pickup days or getting an additional dumpster, but those types of things take time under the current business circumstances. And if you, are, uh, if you choose to impose fees, since I did have uh, uh, an assurance of compliance as of March 16, that you not go back to February 24, uh, you know, if you're not going to grant us additional time, then do it as of March 16 and not February 24. Okay. Um, and right. I do have photographs, if I may approach. Yeah, if you want to show them uh, to the city first, and then uh, I'll take a look. This, um, I, I sent him this email, but... Okay, I see the pictures here that she's um, submitted, but um, the property is still not in compliance. I, it, as of this morning, I was there this morning, and there's still trash and debris in the parking lot. Okay. And I also, Go ahead. I do have some people here that would like to speak also on this property. So, First of all, does the city have any objection to these photographs being made part of the record? If there's no objection, then if I could see them, please. Thank you. Your Honor, if I may, um, I was also informed that there hadn't been a resident complaint in several weeks, which we considered to be some Okay, so first of all, without objection, uh, the seven photographs that were submitted uh, by counsel for the respondent will be made part of the record without objection, and I have uh, reviewed those. Uh, now, what we're, I'm sorry, ma'am, I didn't, I was looking at the pictures. Oh, so I what apologize. did you say? I, I apologize. Uh, that I was told by the supervisor that there had not been a resident complaint since May 21st, and apparently this had been more of an ongoing situation previously. So we considered that to be that maybe we have been we have been making some progress. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Let me go back to the city and ask uh, my question on the the repeat. Do we have information on that? Okay. These issues were previously adjudicated CE one nine one one zero one nine one twelve four of nineteen, and CE one nine zero nine zero zero eight seven ten sixteen of nineteen. Okay. So we have two prior adjudications on this. So April of 19 and October of 19, and those were both for the, the same dumpster trash violations? Yes, sir, but it was October and December of 19. Okay. 12, 4, December, 19, sorry. 10, 16, 19. Okay. And uh, yes, last time we spoke, I told her I hadn't received any complaints since that. Uh, May 21st. I'm not going to dispute the date. May 21st. Uh, but they, we've heard from them since then. They're here today to speak on these issues. And at no time that we've been there has it been in compliance. Every time we get pictures that it is, he's gone out and checked again. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm still with the respondent. Council, do you have anything else that you wanted to tell me? And I'll go back to the city and we'll see where we are. Obviously, you'll have an opportunity to uh, ask questions. Of, Not at this time. Okay. Then you have additional witnesses? Yes. All right. Good morning, Your Magistrate. Thank you. Good morning. Um, we were here October 16th. I need your 20th. name and address. Oh, I apologize. Please. Angela Ogburn, uh, 331 52nd Street, West Palm Beach. Thank you. Um, we were here October 16th. Part of that was clean and sanitary, excessive growth. Um, what else was on that? Excessive growth, 
repairs the walls, the dumpster door, and the list goes on. Anyhow, uh, January 30th, the dumpster doors were ripped off. We contacted Rafi, and he said give him two weeks. He was trying to contact Family Dollar, and they would repair it. Uh, we were in touch with Code, and February 13th, they finally cited them. I have pictures here that I can submit. That's just the dumpster door. Okay, so let me stop you there. If there's going to be any exhibits, those need to go through the city. I'm not going to have a witness um, add to your case. So you need to talk to the city attorney in terms of any additional documents that the city wants me to look at for the city's case. Okay. I would object to those, Your Honor. There's no proper authentication. And this is, this is just dumpster doors. Okay. I think this is really important when you see how this was handled with the dumpster doors, knowing that they, it broke on the 30th. We reported it on the 31st. It was not repaired until March 16th. And then, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. It was repaired on the 13th. If you go the next day, it started all over again. So um, we're not trying to nitpick. These are times where sanitation is very important. The trash is really bad. I'll be happy to show them to the attorney. Uh, the other reason is we have a picture where somebody was camping between the dumpster door and the dumpster, and that is a liability. Somebody could have got hurt. If the door got ripped off by a truck or a car the first time, this man could have easily gotten hurt again. Also, the trash, I have just documents on just trash, the homeless camp. Um, the last time they trimmed the hedges was last year after the last hearing, and they were trimmed this past weekend because you just showed a picture of uh, the 13th and the hedges were really tall, and now they just got trimmed this weekend. They didn't clean the, the toaster and the uh, racks in the corners. There's rats. There's a family apartment complex right next to this. There's children living there. This is a health issue to the neighborhood. I have a neighbor who has written a letter. She's sent it to the city. She's sent it to me to also present today that this is just ongoing. We work with Rafi. Rafi calls Family Dollar, and it can take them anywhere from a day to days to weeks to address it. The police have visited this property and have also given uh, suggestions on what they needed to do to help the issues in the parking lot. There are drug deals going on, there's homeless people hanging out, and there's drinking, they're purchasing alcohol in the store and then drinking it okay, on the so, property. So homelessness issues and, and consumption of alcohol are not part of the case that's before okay. me today. I understand you're upset with this property, but I'm ta I'm here to talk about right. the matters that have been brought before me. And you, know. and you know, this isn't our first time here. This has been going on since 2016. And uh, if you allow me, I will show her the pictures and then have them presented. Again, that's up to the city. Um, the city has no objection to a witness submitting and if you can show photographic uh, documentation and, the, oh, I understand. Okay. I just, and you can put the weight on it that you wish. And while, um, while you're looking at those, I have another question. Mr. Posner, do you know what um, uh, the orders finding violation from those 2019 cases, what they imposed in oh, terms of? I'm sorry, say that again? The, the two cases that make this a repeat. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the penalties or what the orders assessed in terms of? Uh, no, but I could look that up quickly enough for you. If you could take a, find those real uh, quick. Before I do that, I just want to point out this issue with the dumpster doors. I mean, as, as already been stated, this is going on for over two years. And, and we said then, enclose the dumpster and put a lock on it. 
They're not keeping this thing locked, which leads to the homelessness. And yes, I know that's not being adjudicated today, but that's part of the problem. I'll get those dates. Those yeah, if you could you. find um, what happened on those um, 2019 cases, that would be um, helpful to me. This is hurting the quality of life to the surrounding neighborhood. And it is hurting the property values. Okay. Um, have you had an opportunity to look at these? Yes, I have. What is? Uh, do you have an obje any objection to them being made part of the record? I, I do, Your Honor, only because number one, we were not notified that there would be witness testimony or additional documents. So, from a procedural standpoint, I would have liked an opportunity to prepare for this, submit it to my clients, see what they have to say about it. And in no way am I invalidating the neighborhood's concerns or your concerns, ma'am. But again, most of these issues predate my involvement, my firm's involvement in this matter, and agree with your honor as to the issue of liability not being before you, and that would be a family dollar issue, not a neighborhood issue. If anything were to happen, God forbid, we, you know, we would address it and we would deal with it. And there is nothing in the city's communications to me that have anything to do with some of the other issues beyond the trash and the dumpster which we are working on and we are doing the best I can. And I would submit that do, do these residents have eyes on the property 24 seven? Or again, is it one moment that they're looking at the property and this situation's going on? Okay. Magistrate, can I respond to that? There's no need. I, I, I understand the objections over those objections though. I'm gonna make, um, there's three emails and one, two, three, four, six pages of not quite thumbnail but a little bigger than thumbnail photographs that are dated from basically between february and april of this year so those those will also uh, be made part of the record for this hearing if i may your majesty did you um sorry foggy glasses Oh, believe me, I completely understand that. <laughs> the first one, the earlier one, was $500 a day. And the second one was a one-time $1,000 fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, if I may, your magistrate. Anything else? I, I did email Rafi. Hey, so, so let me have, aware. I need you to wrap this up okay. though. I, I get it. So go ahead. No, I'm not cutting you off. I'm just telling you to please go ahead and. and no, but she was in saying that we did not communicate so that we do communicate with the property manager, I'm, the building owner. So I just wanted to let her know. We do let him know. It did get to the point why bother because it was a daily thing. Okay. Anything else from the city? No. May I briefly respond, Your Honor? Yes, of course. To, to, um, I, I did not imply that you were not in communication with me. I just was not involved prior to March. And I have been in communication with Rafi, who opted not to be here today and preferred that I just handle this hearing because the problem with a lot of these notifications is that they go to the landlord. By the time they go up to the store, to corporate, and back down to council, it does sometimes take too long. The, the, the process of getting down to me, but now I am involved almost on a daily basis with this property. All right, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, all right, in this case, uh, first of all, the city has proper notice. Uh, respondent is represented by council. Um, I've heard all the testimony, I've reviewed the exhibits that not only were originally part of the file, but that were submitted by both uh, the council for the respondent, as well as the additional documents uh, submitted by the city. Um, I remember this case from last year, and you know I'm, I'm glad to hear that you're involved. You sound truly um, intending to to light the fire, um, uh, but nevertheless, this uh, as I said, I remember these cases. Uh, this um, if this wasn't a double repeat case, I I would 
have a little more uh, ease at finding um, an opportunity to be a little um, more lenient, but um, I am, in this case, uh, based on the evidence that I've seen, the current conditions of the property and the prior cases, I am going to find the property remains in violation as cited. I'm going to find this is a repeat violation. And I am going to assess daily fines of $500 per day uh, beginning February 13th, which was when the repeat violation um, was first observed. This does need to, they need to get a handle on this, and I, and I hope you're successful in doing that. Uh, I hope but, so too, but, Your Honor. But to the city's point and, the, and their, their, your, your neighbor's point, this has to stop. So uh, I, that is my order in this case. Thank you all very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Matter number 24, CE 20020410 21st Street. Over there, the other side. Okay, thank you. Okay. Good morning, Cassandra St. Hilaire, um, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. This property was cited on February 26. Certified mail was signed for on May 7th. The property was posted and hand delivered on June 2nd. Um, I've had contact with the property owner. The property was originally cited for 3412B, 9482A, 1813B, 1806A, 18265. At this time, the property has complied with 1865, 1806A, and 3402B. The city is requesting an additional 45 days or $50 a day until compliance is achieved. So the uh, parking and the roof and wall foundation yeah. issues are what's outstanding? Yeah, they're outstanding. And I have to say he has been working on it. Um, so that's all that's left to do. But he has put, done a lot to the property so far. Okay. And uh, the city believes 45 days is enough to bring it in? We're open to more if, okay. he, if he wants more. Yeah. Yes, sir. Let me hear from the Good respondent. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I've been working with Cassandra. Everything has been very nice and under control. The only thing is that I would like kindly request is an extension of time, as just she mentioned about. Because of my special situation, I can explain what I have in mind. First of all, uh, my permanent residency is in Washington State, Seattle area. I live there all the time, and because of my health, serious health concerns, I bought a house in West Palm Beach last year to come over here and heal somehow my problems. And uh, obviously when I received a notice about the violation, I've been working with Cassandra and I've been doing my best to bring everything up to code, whatever uh, is mentioned in the violations. And uh, I have very serious health problems. And last, uh, actually at the beginning of this month, when I was working, I broke my hand. So it's additional pain that pushed me back and besides uh, having serious injuries to my back, lower back and neck, now my hand is uh, barely working, I need a substantial additional time to comply with everything and it would be my best intention to do whatever is needed to comply with the city of West Palm Beach uh, requirements ordinances. So if you could provide me with additional time, uh, especially when I will have to fly back to Seattle, to my home, to take care of something that I neglected for so many months. Recently, because of the coronavirus pandemic, I would be very happy and I would really appreciate it. Um, Magistrate, I don't thank believe... You. Let, me, let me ask this. Uh, I'm ahead. sorry, Magistrate, I didn't believe that he put his name on the record. Go ahead and... Um, for the record, state your name and address, please. Yes. My name is Joseph Lewandowski, and my address is 1011 21st Street, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33407. Thank you, Mr. Lewandowski. Thank you. Um, 
what exactly has to be done in terms of these outstanding violations to um i guess i don't know what was going on with like the bottom of the property he had some um damage there but he has been fixing like i said he has done a lot of work he's been fixing it and um all by himself i have to say okay. um and there has been progress but he still needs more time like closing up some of the gaps that there are there and so like i said we're opening we 45 days but we're open some more if he needs it are, are these projects that require building permits or yeah. uh not for the bottom he's just covering it okay. up not that i i don't believe so okay uh yeah um all right mr lewandowski so i'm i'm willing to work with you on this and give you some additional time but how much time do you think you need to to do this obviously the more time the better it would be i i understand that you have some limits so i will do my best whatever you can give me i will do my best to achieve whatever I can to make you and the city of West Palm Beach administration, everybody happy. Do you think you can finish this in the next 90 days, which is three uh, months? Yes, I will do my best, Your Honor, and I will ask somebody in Seattle to take care of my home in the meantime, and I will stay here longer just to fulfill my legal obligation to do everything that I'm supposed to. All right, does the city have any objection if I say 90 days on this? No. So I'll, I will give you an additional 90 days. Thank to, you very much, so, um, For the record, Mr. Lewandowski is here. The city has proper notice. I think you testified to every possible form of notice that you could have on this one. Um, based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property has complied with 34102B, 18106A, and 18265, but remains in violation of city code sections 94482A and 18103B. I'm going to allow you an additional 90 days to finish this uh, work and get those last two into compliance. Um, this, is there a recommendation regarding daily fines? After oh, it was the like $50 a day. Okay, so my order is going to give you 90 days to comply, and if it if you violate that, you could it'll, it's going to say that you will get um, assessed daily fines of $50 per day until you're in compliance. So the only thing I would suggest to you is that if you're getting close to the 90 days, and you feel like you need more time, and you're you're truly trying you know, stay in touch with the city let them know ask if you can come back here and ask for additional time Ma Rather magistrate i'm sorry um in a situation like that uh the city would ask if you would give the time up up front the extra time rather than coming back again for another hearing so i mean I, i'm that's why i asked how much time does he think he needs if, if nobody has an objection i can roll that out Further, you you guys tell me. I'm. I think ninety days is more, is sufficient. And he even he's agreed to ninety days. Okay. Um, do you need more time, Mr. Lewandowski? Other than ninety days? Yeah, I will do my best, and obviously I cannot guarantee if I will be able to work tomorrow. But I will do my best to satisfy everybody and comply with everything that I'm supposed to do. Well, how much time do you think you would need? Because 90 days is three months. Do you need additional time? Because this is the time you to know, ask for it. Yeah, I, I would need more time, but if you cannot give it to me, then obviously anything. I want to give you, Mr. Lomboski, I want to give you the time that you reasonably need. Um, I, I just suggested 90 days okay. based on what it looks like right. needs to be done. Uh, if you think you need yes. 120 days or 150 days, I'm, I'm happy to do that as well. As yes. If you could give me uh, the maximum amount that you can give me when it comes to, that you can allow to have me, I would be really happy because you see, I already have a ticket uh, back to Seattle and uh, from Seattle to West Palm Beach, an, an airplane ticket. So in the meantime, I will have to go there because all my property, everything has been neglected. I, I cannot rely on anybody to take care of it for me. So whatever the maximum time you can give me, that would be very helpful and right. very appreciative, appreciated okay. by me. Now based on the city attorney's recommendation, do you have any objection to 180 days just out of an abundance of caution? Yeah, that would be fine. six months. Thank you very much, Your Honor. I really appreciate it. I will do my best. 
All right, so same findings, except we'll change the 90 days to 180 days. And um, thank you I will so sign much, that order. All right, thank you all. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Matter number 13, CE 2001 310 Granada Road. Good morning, Your Honor. My name is Stephen Cartagena. Good morning. 10 Granada Road, West Palm Beach. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. Um, with regard to uh, property 13310 Granada Street, uh, this property was initially cited by Code Officer Donald Williams on January 24, 2020. Um, the property was reassigned to me as of 6520, uh, as uh, Donald's not able to be here. Uh, the certified mail was sent. We do have a signed certified mail uh, receipt on file. Uh, the property in City Hall was, post was reposted rather on 6520 by myself. Um, I did meet with um, uh, an individual there at the property who indicated that they were the owner. Um, she indicated that they were in process of uh, securing the permitting and also uh, they were working with zoning with regard to the landscaping plan for the property. Uh, the city is requesting an additional 45 days in order to comply or a fine of $50 per day be imposed. Uh, 50 or 150? I didn't hear. Uh, 50. 50. Um, so there's a, they need a permit for the pavers that are already installed? Right, and, exactly. And um, what was the prohibited uh, plant material or the well, approved plant material? Well, actually, in the front yard there, um, you know, if they can get the approval for the, for the um, pavers, um, then they'd be allowed to keep those. Uh, if not, then the pavers, you know, uh, would, would have to be removed or a portion thereof, and then um, they'd have to include some landscaping. I understand. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. To hear from the respondents. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Um, we uh, obviously apologize for all this uh, trouble here. We're just trying to get Mr. Cartagena. This and figure out exactly what it is that we need to do. Mr. Cartagena, yes, how are you involved with the property? I'm, uh, Janet and I are married, so I'm the co-owner. Okay. We're both owners. Um, we did send an email to the uh, city back in April asking for some guidance. Um, they mentioned writing on the survey where the pavers were gonna be, but we, we did when we originally applied for the permit, we included a handwritten drawing with where all of the pavers were, so we we asked if that was okay, and we, we did not get a reply back. And then we're we're just not certain about the landscape um, requirement that that uh, is on the violation. It says it must be approved plant material, and it's pretty much the same hedges that are throughout the the neighborhood. So we'd just like to get past this. Sure. Ask the city respectfully what it is exactly that we need to do to, to move forward. Okay, let me, let me ask Mr. Williams a question. So has a permit been applied for at this point? Um, I did not notice um, uh, as of, um, I believe, uh, the early part of the week that a uh, recent permit has been pulled. Have you guys uh, applied for a permit? We did apply um, for a permit. I don't remember the exact date. It would have been sometime in February. Okay. And then we got a notice in March that it failed. And then we asked the city, you know, for, for guidance. And that's and when, when you, so when you got the notice that the permit failed, is that when you got the information that said you needed to submit a survey that shows where yes, the- Yes, we had already submitted a survey but uh, specifically what it said is, please illustrate on the survey the location of the proposed brick pavers, including dimensions and the setbacks to the property line. Okay, so has that been done? We thought we did it because we, we, we submitted a handwritten drawing, but we didn't do it a second time. 
if that's what you're okay well it sounds like you might need to i don't know i didn't see the, what was submitted but it sounds like they might need to you might need to do that you need so to do whatever server, whatever direction just... you got from the city when it, it when they told you that the original application was insufficient you need to do whatever they told you to do on that um and then well, I don't know who they need to speak to or, or well I would I would recommend that they make contact back with planning and zoning um, once again because ultimately they're the ones who have to either approve or disapprove whatever they're applying for um, as I said I didn't I didn't see anything noted um, as of recent in the system that said you know with the you know COVID-19 uh, situation um, I know um, um, staff had been somewhat scaled back, and so maybe there's you know some some lag time there. So I'm so I don't really know. I can't really speak on behalf sure. of you know it, what the facts are. Let me ask the city this question: based on your your review of the violation, do you know if what was installed? is able to be approved or is there like too much and some of it's going to probably um, have to come out i can only guess be, i don't or do you I not know no i do I, not and know. i don't want you to guess i just um, right no i i do not know because that I, you know I, I again on this one i want to give us give enough time right. to I understand. get this done so if it's just a matter of an uh, application and then a permit and an inspection right that's different than having to change physically what was installed right I understand um, so I guess you need to work with the, the planning and zoning department and okay. get that permit so that they can come out and inspect what you've done and, okay. and hopefully that'll be that will resolve it um, but okay. they're the ones that are gonna have to take a look at it and make sure that Absolutely. the pavers comply with whatever requirements there are for landscaping and that sort of thing and i don't know okay. what those are going to be i'm going to uh now, matt if i may um this planning and zoning is there just an office that we go to because the email that we had sent originally was to a, a particular person in west palm and so do we is there a general email address for planning and zoning or do we go to their office or how does that process mr work? williams can they speak to you offline about yeah, that? that's fine once you after we conclude you. this proceeding you can uh, speak to uh, the code enforcement staff uh, offline and they can point you in the right direction um is there anything else you folks would like to tell um you? well just uh we would just like to thank the city of west palm beach particularly the code enforcement folks for for all of their help through this process my wife and i also work for for government we know how difficult things are Right um, I'm, I'm sure like they say. appreciate that because usually it's uh, it's not the compliments that that are that are fired across the bow. It's usually the, the criticism. So um, that's appreciated. Um, okay, I am going to find proper notice. Uh, respondents are present. Um, property uh, based on the testimony and the evidence for, does remain in violation as cited in the notice of violation. Um, I'm going to um, allow, again, out of an abundance of caution, I'm going to give this 90 days to comply. So that gives, should give you more than enough time to get this thing through the permitting process, get it inspected. And even if any changes have to be made to the actual paper configuration, that should give you enough time um, to take care of that and get this into compliance. Um, after the 90 days, there will be daily fines of $50 per day. So. Um, I will sign that order and uh, good luck. Okay, thank okay, you. Thanks. thanks. That's not your order. Mm-hmm. Matter number seven, CE20010258, 1403 North Mangonia Drive. Morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Dan Kemper. Good morning. Um, building Division, City of West Palm Beach. Um, this 
um, case is enclosing a porch on the back of the house. Um, it's been framed in and they've had ample time to get their permits. I got a call from a woman on the property and explained to her that she needed the proper building permits to do the work that they were that they've already started on which is um, basically from what I can see from the outside of the fence is enclosing some kind of porch. Can I say something? Yeah, that, this is not my case. I have a shed behind my house. What was the address? 1403 North Mangonia Drive. This is for a shed. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Yep, you're right. I explained the wrong one. Um, I apologize. No problem. <clears throat> um, a rear shed's been placed at the rear of this property at um, 1403 North Mangonia. A man called me a week ago. Was that you? Right. No, no, it's not me. I, I you hired, hired somebody to try to resolve it. Right. Um, yeah. The, the the problem with that property is is we don't even know the way that the city owns all that easement on the lake if that shed is on city property. It's not. <clears throat> it's, not. it's not. It's not. And okay. I had a survey yesterday. Um, because you did what? People, I had a survey done yesterday because I came up here and I couldn't find a survey. So after that, I hired the, the company to take care of it for me. Um, and so they're closed permits. Well, actually, fast. if I can... I just want need to get your name and address on the oh, record. Oh, I'm sorry, so. Edward Williams, 1403 North Mangoni Drive. Um, um, Michelle's husband. You are Mr. Williams. Are you? I'm her husband, Michelle's husband. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay, so we're talking about the issue of the shed possibly being on city right, right. property, okay. and Mr. Williams, you got a survey. It's do you have the survey, or did the surveyor come out and do she, the work? She just did it yesterday. Okay. Um, because of COVID, I, I hired them in uh, 218. I thought it was taken care of. And then I got the certified letter. And because of COVID and everything going on, I guess maybe they put it on the back burner or whatever. So I just... just how, how long do you think, um, <clears throat> now that you've obtained the survey, that you're going to get the package put together to apply for the, the permit for the shed? I, I would say two weeks, but I'm not doing it. You know, All right, how, about, how about if we give you a 30-day extension to... Um, that sounds good. Good deal. Thank you. Yep. I think you can get, it, get this wrapped up in the 30 days. I hope so. This has been a nightmare. Okay. Thanks. And uh, obviously, uh, the city's recommendation is for 30 days. Extension. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. So is there anything else that you'd like to tell me about this? I think I understand where, where we are and where we're going, but if there's anything no, else. No, I think it's on our property. They did the survey. It's, it's set back. It's on our property. It's been um, installed correctly, and everything's fine, I think. So, so. once they get the survey, it still has to be Inspected. Permitted and inspected. Correct. And, okay. and zoning will look at it and, 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 and approve it. And yes. Okay. Right. Then um, I am going to find proper notice in this case. Um, I'm going to find the property is in violation as cited in the notice of violation. I'm going to uh, uh, accept and agree with the recommendation for an additional 30 days uh, to comply. Um, Thereafter, I'll do uh, assess daily fines of $25 a day until compliance is achieved. So you need to make sure you get this done in the 30 days. I don't want to see the daily fines oh, hit. Call them today and let them know. Thank you very much. For Thank you very much. All right. Matter number 25, CE20030016, 1813 North Tamron Avenue. Good morning. My name is Rami Galli, 9481 Campy Drive, Lake Worth, Florida, 33467. Good morning. Chrissy Anderson Hilaire, Code Enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. Um, this property was cited on March 2nd. Certified mail was sent out on um, March 12th. It was posted on June 5th. 
Certified mail was also signed for on um, March 12th. I've had contact with the property owner. The property was originally cited for 18105J, 18106A, 18162A, 2232A, 82-144, 82-148, 9442B.2-2, 94442E, 94446-2, and 94485G. The property has complied with 18105J, 18162A, 2232A, 82-144, 82-148, 94442B.2-2, 9442 um, At this time, the city is requesting an additional 30 days for 94442E and 94446-2 an additional 60 days for 9445G or $50 a day until compliance is achieved. I think I'm so the only violations that remain outstanding are the landscaping. The parking. And the parking. Yeah, the parking lot. Okay. Great. And you're recommending 30 days for the landscaping and 60 days for the, par yeah. for the parking lot. For the parking lot. lot, yes. And then what was the daily fine you recommend? Fifty dollars a day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, let me hear from the respondent. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm in complete agreement with Officer Cassandra. We've been in contact, and we hope to have the landscaping done as soon as possible. And we're just waiting for uh, permit approvals uh, for the parking lot. Okay, I appreciate it. Um, I will find proper notice in this case. I will find property remains in violation of 94442E, 94446-2, 94485B1E, and 94485G, but has complied with all other code sections that were cited, uh, except the city's recommendation uh, to allow 30 additional days for compliance with the landscaping violations, and that's the 94442 and 94446. And then I'll allow an additional 60 days for compliance with the parking uh, area violations, and that's the 94485 code sections. Uh, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed if either of those go beyond the, t the extensions. Um, and I will sign that order, okay? Thank, thank you. you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. Number one, CE 2004-0124-317 Coniston Road. Do we have any other uh, respondents present, or, or no. did we go through everybody who was here for a case? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. It looks like we do not have any other respondents present. Okay, go ahead. Officer Luster, West Palm Cove. This property was cited for rental license, certificate of use, and penalties of operating a, a business without the proper licensing, and not having a business tax receipt also. And how this case came about, the police department called, David Krishner called. Oh, I just ran in him tired. Um, to, to say that it was numerous calls from the police department to this property for different kind of reasons. It's in the case file. Uh, disturbances, they had, uh, let's see, 10 different cases where the police showed up to this property. It was for disturbance, overdose, loud music, quite a few disturbances. So I gave Ms. Wagner a call and to explain to her that her license were not um, up to date for as being paid for and she was operating 
from the home in legal activity in regards to um, transient living. And it is a rental property that has a rental license that just not has been paid for. And she was renting rooms to different folks. Okay. So it's not like she was renting to a single family. She was renting to veterans. Like a boarding she was house. running a, a rooming house running is what she was house, doing. Yeah. And she instructed me that um, everybody would be out by a certain time. And I asked her, could I come and have that verified? And she told me to look through the window. That's what, that was her response to me. And she also said that um, Officer Angel Vargas had came to the units and emptied it out, which he did respond to, but on another call for disturbance. So I went there yesterday. It still looks like people are living there. Uh, garbage can at the road, um, doghouse, bicycles, numerous things that indicate to me that people are still residing at the property. So I'm asking for the one-time fine on the business tax license. I'm asking for uh, $250 a day on the rental license, $250 per day on the certificate of use, and the penalty of, uh, of the fine for the penalties of operating a business without a proper license. I'm asking for a one-time fine of $250. Okay, um, okay. Notice by notice was certified on this one. Certified mail was signed on 4 30, 2020. The property was posted on 5 20, 2020. Right. And I spoke to Miss uh, Wagner on 4 7, I believe. Okay, I will find proper notice in this case. Um, Based on the mm -hmm. testimony and the evidence, property remains in violation as cited in the notice of violation. I will accept the city's recommendation and assess a one-time $250 fine for the violation of 82144. Um, on the remaining three violations, uh, I will require compliance within um, 10 days or assess daily fines of $250 per day until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Have a great day. Matter number two, CE 2005 37043737th way. Number two. Good morning. Good morning. Red Young City, West Palm Beach Code Compliance, presenting this case for Officer Paul McFarlane. 3704 37th way was cited on 5 4 of 20 with the notice of violation posted at the property and city hall on 519 of 20. Certified mail was sent on 55 of 20. This property was cited for 18162A rental license violation and 2232A COU required. Uh, special magistrate, this property is still being at, solicited as a rental on the line. Um, therefore, the city is requesting an additional 30 days to come into compliance or $200 per day until compliance is achieved. Thank you. I do find proper notice with the certified mail and posting. Based on the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited. Accept the city's recommendation for an additional 30 days to comply and thereafter daily fines of $200 per day. Thank you. Number three, CE 2003-0320-609-52nd Street. Good morning, Joseph Oliva, Chronic Nuisance Officer for the City of West Palm Beach. This property was uh, declared a chronic nuisance on 317 2020. The declaration was posted on 318 2020 and certified mail sent on 318 2020. There has been no contact with the owner nor an action plan to date. The notice of violation was posted on 43 2020 and certified mail sent on 43 2020. The property has been owned since uh, 1994, October of 1994. Its previous adjudications um, on 12-17-2019 for a rental license, uh, fence and disrepair, boards slash panels on windows, trash and debris, outdoor storage, um, excessive overgrowth, exterior paint, 
repair rotten wood, in-op vehicles, replace screens, um, garbage can placement, and then also on 5-3-2018 for outdoor storage, unpaved parking, in-op vehicles, um, swale needs sod, fence repair and clean and sanitary conditions. And then on 12-6-2012, also for landscape maintenance, unsanitary conditions, outside storage, and obstruction, obstruction of the sidewalk. This property has been cited 15 other times. Um, yesterday's inspection showed excessive overgrowth, landscape maintenance, trash and debris, outdoor storage, roof repair needed, structure needs paint, broken windows, and boards on the structure. The city requests that the special magistrate find a pattern of nuisance activity and enter a chronic nuisance service order for the services to be provided by the city to include but not limited to maintaining of the landscape, removal of any trash and debris, trimming of trees and hedges, access to the yard and any other abatement methods necessary to keep this property in compliance. All right. The property is vacant too. It is vacant? Yes. Okay. All right, I, I am uh, going to find proper notice. I'm gonna find that uh, the city's declaration of chronic nuisance is upheld, authorized this, uh, the city to provide chronic nuisance service to the property, enter the property, abate the violations, and assess the costs. And I will sign that order. Thank you. Number four, CE 2005 West Executive Center Drive. Good morning. Good morning. Raylian City, West Palm Beach Code Compliance, 751 West Executive Drive was originally cited on 514 of 20 with the notice of violation posted at the property and City Hall on 519 of 20. Certified mail was sent on 515 of 20. This property was cited for 82148, affidavit required, 82144, BTR required, and 2232A, COU required. I have made contact with the manager of the Brand Smart, but the violations still do exist. Um, the special magistrate, the city is requesting, um, for the last three years, this business has been delinquent on their BTR three consecutive years in a row. Therefore, the city is requesting um, a one-time fine on the 82140, I'm sorry, 82144, a $250 one-time fine, and all on the COU, I'm sorry, and the 2232A, 10 days to come into compliance or $300 per day until compliance is achieved. Okay, and you said you want you're recommending a one thousand dollar one time fine on the BTR. Is that um, five hundred special five hundred? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, in this case, I do find proper notice with the posting and the certified mail based on the evidence and testimony. I find the property remains in violation as cited in the notice. I will accept the city's recommendation. Allow ten days for compliance with. Uh, 2232A, thereafter daily fines of $300 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved uh, on the business tax receipt violation. I will impose a one-time fine of $500. Thank you. Thank you. Number five, CE 2005 Macy Street. It's also being called with matter number 36. Pardon me? Also being called with matter number 36, CE 2005-0050, same address. Okay. okay. Good morning. Atelio Bilal, inspector for the city of West Palm Beach. The property was originally posted on 5-7-2020 uh, for no water, we received certified uh, mail of June 4th, 2020. It's a chronic nuisance property where we've had, this is the second time I know of, where there's no water to this property and people are living on the property. So this is already under a chronic nuisance order I believe it's a police chronic nuisance um in the system there there's no active order service okay. order for it. um for yeah my case is going off of his uh, Richard Pesmino code enforcement West Palm Beach I had cited the property um 181021 responsibilities of owner 18106a clean and sanitary conditions 
18215B, failure to comply, and 18265 to uh, board the property. Uh, I cited the property May 28th. Certified mail was sent May 29th, and the property was posted on May 28th. I've had no contact from anyone from the property, any representatives, and there have been no changes. The property still does not have active water. And uh, my order is going off of the building's order. Okay. And what, when you posted, you also posted City Hall? Yes. Just right. to get that on the record. Yes. Okay. Uh, so what, uh, what relief is the city seeking? Immediate board and secure. And that's, that's for um, case uh, 2005-0050. What, uh, what, uh, what relief are you seeking on um, the case ending in 152, agenda item 5? Thank you. Uh, my case is going off of his, the order for um, unsafe. So I, I, I would like a 24 hours or an order to um, board the property. property needs to be vacated first and um, the current conditions constitute a threat to public health safety and welfare and the health yep. safety and welfare of the occupants yes they currently do not have an active water account and um, they um, they they immediately need to be vacated from the property okay all right, I will find uh, proper notice in both cases you have uh, testified to posting and certified mail Based on the evidence and the testimony, I will find the property remains in violation as cited for both um, case ending in 152 and the case ending in 050. Um, based on the testimony for both cases, I do find the property or the violations constitute a, um, a threat to the health, safety, and welfare. Um, not only the public, not only the residents, but you know, that that in my view, bleeds over into the neighboring properties as well. That creates a health, safety, and welfare issue. So I will um, allow 24 hours for the property to be complied. Thereafter, uh, I authorize the city to enter the property, abate the health, safety, and welfare violations, and assess the costs. Thank you. Thank you. Number eight, CE2001025914381438 North Mangonia Circle. Dan Kempa, City of West Palm Building Inspector. This case was the one I mistakenly described. <laughs> um, the addition on the back of the residence and the city would ask for 30 days to comply or $100 a day fine. This has been going on for several months now, so they've had ample time to apply for permits. And how did we get notice uh, of the violation in the hearing? Um, it was mail and I posted the property. Certified mail? Yes. And City Hall was posted as well? Um, yes. Okay. And the, the work in this one is the... Um, closing in of the porch. Closing in of the yeah. porch. This is the closing in of the porch. Okay. All right, then um, I will find proper notice with the certified mail and the posting. Uh, based on the evidence, I will find the property remains in violation as cited in the notice of violation. I'll allow the additional 30 days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Number 28, CE 19080319 Court, Unit A102. Good morning. Okay. 
Ma'am, were you um, sworn in when I placed everybody under oath earlier this morning? Let me go ahead and um, place you under oath now. If you'll raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And can you tell me your name and address, please? Erica Enrique Sanchez. Address is 3901 36 Court, West Palm Beach, 33407. And how are you uh, associated with the property? I'm the new property manager. You're the new property manager? Mm -hmm. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Tilio Belisle, Plumbing Inspector for the City of West Palm Beach. The uh, property was initially cited. We have seven cases for this uh, property, several different units. Um, do we want to address them as a whole? Are they all on my agenda this morning? 28 through 35. 28 through 35. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and call those okay. and let's... Uh, okay. Matter number 29, CE1908032039013036 Court, Unit D204. Matter number 30, CE1908032039013036 Court, Unit B204. Matter number 31, CE1908032039013036 Court, Unit C210. Matter number 32, CE1908032439013036 Court, Unit B201. Matter number 33, CE1908032039013036 Court, Unit E201. Matter number 34, CE1908032039013036 Court, Unit A211. And matter number 35, CE1908032939. 390136 Court, Unit B210. All right. Okay. The uh, property was initially cited 2-4 uh, of 2020 for interior work being performed without proper permit or inspections uh, per City of West Palm Beach ordinances. The um, the property has been making substantial improvements to the interiors of the units. No permits have been applied for as of 6-16-2020. Is all the work different in each unit? It's it's approximately the same depending on which unit you go to. There's there's various things, electrical, plumbing, um, interior uh, renovations to the to the units. All that require building permits, which have not yes. been applied for. Yes, okay. they have not been applied for. Okay. Um, you did a stop work order, I assume. Yes. Stop work order was issued on uh, two four of twenty twenty. All right, so has, has any um, progress been made towards applying for permits at this point? Not at this point. Okay. What, um, what's the city's recommendation? Um, 14 days to submit for all permits, uh, obtain uh, the required permits within 30 days or $100 a day fine. Okay, thank you. Yes. Let me hear from the respondent. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so there was uh, work done to the water heaters. I believe they changed some hoses or there was water heaters exchanged without a permit prior to me working there. I have had a plumber and electrician go in there and walk all the units and make sure that everything is up to code and they have applied for permits. I actually have the permits. I think my electrician emailed you yesterday. Um, I do have the applications that I'm gonna submit today for permits. Okay and we should be taking care of it. It's just been a slow process since I started because I started during this pandemic and it's hard to go into the unit's residence because a lot of them don't want us, um, don't want the electrician or the plumber in there and it was kind of working around it. But we have um, looked at everything, we're addressing everything that was done without a permit and there's permits applied for it. Okay, so um, sounds like you should be able to get the, the, everything applied for within the 14 days that the city's recommending and they actually have the permits in hand Absolutely. within a month. All right, great. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. So um, for all of these cases, agenda items 29 through 35, 
I uh, will find proper notice. Respondent is present. Uh, I will find that um, the property, each unit remains in violation as cited in the notice of violation. I'll accept the city's recommendation uh, to allow an additional 14 days for the respondent to submit for the appropriate building permits and then 30 days um, to actually have the permits in hand and then you know, proceed from there under the building permits. Okay, okay. thank you very much. All thank right, you. thank you. Matter number nine, CE 2005 Greenwood Avenue. Good morning. Good morning. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 4401 Greenwood Avenue was cited on 51920. The property in City Hall were posted on 52020, and certified mail was sent on 52020. The property was cited for 94 273 D 31 B3, 94 6, 82 144. The city, I've had contact with the owner. The city is asking for a split order. For code section 82-144, the city is asking for a one-time fee of $250. And for 94-6 and 94-273-D-31-B-3, the city is asking for 30 days or $200 per day. So is this, this is a residence and they're Correct. So it's a residence um, that's operating as a restaurant. Okay. And that's not uh, permitted in that zoning district, Correct. I presume. All right. So on the business tax, on the, on the business tax receipt violation, then are they able to get a business tax receipt? Um, it's two different things going on there. There's the restaurant, and then I found that there's also a gardening business so um the owner needs to apply for a business tax for so both that of them. that one is permissible correct but they need a business. so it can be a home occupation okay um but he just cannot do the business from the, the residence restaurant part. yes okay okay i understand all right um based on the uh, testimony and the evidence first i do find proper notice with the posting and the certified mail i will find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation, uh, assess a one-time $250 fine for the violation of section 82-144, and I will allow an additional 30 days for compliance for uh, 94-273 and 94-6, and thereafter daily fines of $200 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Matter number 10, CE 2005-0119-808-41st Street. Natalie Clark, City of West Palm Beach Code Enforcement. 808-41st Street was cited on 52020. The property in City Hall were posted on 52120, and certified mail was sent on 52120. The property was cited for 110.1, 18-106A, 34-102B, 74-34-A1J, 78-6, and 94-302-A3. The property has since complied with 18-106A and 74-34-A1J. Uh, the city is asking for a split order for code section 78-6 and 34-102B. The city is asking for an additional 15 days or $100 per day. And for code section 110.1 and 94-302-A3, the city is asking for an additional 60 days or $100 per day. Okay. I will find proper notice with the posting and with the certified mail. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I will find the property has complied with 18106A and 7434A1J, but remains in violation of the remaining code sections cited in the notice of violation. I'll accept the city's recommendation for the split order, allow an additional 15 days for the violations uh, regarding inoperative vehicles and the numbering standards, which is 34102B and 78-6. Uh, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed if compliance is not achieved within the 15 days. And then for the um, 
fence permit and the inspections that are associated with that. Um, that's sections 110.1 and 94302A3. I'll allow an additional 60 days for compliance. And again, thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day. Thank you. Yes. Matter number 11, CE 20010162429 Upland Road. <coughs> Michael Williams, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach. Property 429 Upland Road um, was initially cited on. 1 13 20 by code officer Donald Williams. The property was cited for 18106L landscaping requirements and 94 442 E landscaping of swales and parkways. Um, as Donald is um, not able to be here today, the property was reassigned to me on 6 5 20. Uh, certified mail was sent. Uh, certified, um, um, there is a signed certified mail receipt um, as well. The property was reposted by myself on 6520. I did meet with the owner of the property, spoke with him on, on numerous occasions um, via the phone uh, regarding compliance of the property. Um, he did request some additional time, uh, so the city's uh, amenable to giving it an additional 45 days in order to comply or a fine of $50 per day be imposed. All right, so it can't all be mulch, it has to be yeah, he mulching dirt. Right, he has the entire yard uh, mulched in. Yeah. All right, all right. I will find proper notice with the certified mail and with the posting and reposting, um, based on the testimony and the evidence. I do find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional forty-five days to comply, and thereafter daily fines of fifty dollars per day until compliance is achieved. Matter number twelve, CE two zero zero one zero one six six four three two Ardmore Road. Um, property 432 Ardmore Road um, was initially cited by Code Officer Donald Williams on 11320. Property was cited for 18106A, clean and sanitary, 18106C, um, drainage, uh, more, more specifically the uh, grading of the property, and 18106I, litter, trash, and debris. Uh, property was reassigned to me on 6520. Certified mail was sent to the property owner. The property was reposted by myself on 6520. Uh, did meet with the owner uh, once again with regard to this uh, property. Spoke to him on several occasions uh, via the phone. Um, again, property owners requesting some additional time in order to comply. City would like to grant an additional 45 days in order to comply or a fine of $50 per day be imposed. So is this flooding or is it causing neighboring property to flood? Um, it's, a, it's, it's a vacant lot and due to the fact that um, there was like uh, mounds and oh, so I forth. Oh, I see, the mounds need to be smoothed right. out. Yes, and, exactly. Okay, I, I understand. All right, I will find proper notice in this case with the certified mail and with the posting. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I do find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 45 days for compliance. Thereafter, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Matter number 14, CE 20020454525 Claremore Drive. Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach, property 525. Claremore Drive um, was initially cited by Code Officer Donald Williams on two, um, no, I'm sorry, this particular property was cited by myself, okay. Um, no, I, um, I stand corrected once again. This property was cited by Donald, uh, was reassigned to me. <laughs> on, um, it was cited by Donald on 228.20. Um, property was cited for 18265 boarding certificate, 74-34-A-1-J, um, uh, garbage can placement, and 94302-A-4 fence and disrepair, and 94-442-E the landscaping of the swales and the parkway. Um, property was reassigned to me on 6420 um, due to the fact Donald's not able to be here. Uh, certified mail was sent. We do have a signed certified mail 
receipt on file. Property was reposted by myself as well as City Hall on 6420. I did meet with this particular owner at the property as well. Um, uh, also spoke with him over the phone. Uh, he's requesting some additional time um, as he did indicate that he does reside out of state. So the city's uh, requesting an additional 45 days in order to comply or $50 per day be imposed. All right. I do find proper notice with the certified mail and the posting uh, based on the testimony uh, and the uh, photograph evidence. I do find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 45 days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $50 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Matter number 15, CE 2003031250 Okeechobee Boulevard, Unit 408. Michael Williams, Code Enforcement Officer, City of West Palm Beach, Property 550 Okeechobee Boulevard, Unit Number 408, uh, was initially cited by Code Officer Donald Williams on 31820. Property was cited for 18162 uh, rental license violation and 22-32-A certificate of use. Um, property was reassigned to me on 6520 due to the fact Donald's unable to be here. The certified mail was sent. Uh, we do have a signed certified um, mail receipt on file. Property was reposted by myself at City Hall um, and as well as the property on 6520. City's requesting an additional 30 days in order to comply or fine of $50 per day be imposed. Um, with regard to this particular unit, um, in all of the previous years, they, they have paid on time for some reason. Uh, they just have not paid, um, and so there is an outstanding fee. There's some late fees as well. Um, and once again, the city is requesting 30 additional days in order to comply or fine of $50 per day be imposed. Right, thank you. Uh, with the certified mail and the uh, posting, I will find proper notice based on the testimony and the evidence. I will find property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation. Uh, allow an additional 30 days for compliance and thereafter assess daily fines of $50 per day until compliance is achieved. Thank you. Matter number 16, CE 2001 132th Street. Good morning. John Frosca, West Palm Beach Code Enforcement, Chronic Nuisance. Six thirty two thirteenth Street was declared a chronic nuisance on January seventeenth of two thousand and twenty. The property was posted that day and certified mail was sent out. I have not actually spoke to the owner of the property, however, there's been conversation um, in April uh, with my boss um, arguing the validity of the case, but no action plan. So certified mail was sent out. Um, for notice of hearing, but then it was canceled for the corona. So um, additional notice was sent out uh, for this notice of hearing, um, and the property was posted on May 27th of 2020, and uh, certified mail was sent uh, the same day. No action plan has um, been submitted, and no work has been done to uh, correct any of the violations based on the former violation back in 2014 that's still running fines. Um, it's pretty severe, this property. Um, I don't know for sure if it's occupied. They say that somebody's living there. The neighbors say that somebody's living there. I don't know. There's no water. No one should be living there. So as far as I know, it's a vacant property. So the city is asking that you formally declare this a chronic nuisance and enter a service order to abate uh, the issues of cutting, cleaning, boarding, securing, um, but not limited to that, and a bill all costs back to the owner of the property. All right, thank you. Uh, I do find proper notice based on your testimony. Uh, the city's declaration of chronic nuisance is upheld. I uh, will authorize the city to uh, provide chronic nuisance services, enter the property, abate those violations, and assess the costs. And I will sign that order. 
Matter number 17, CE200, 20133, 1000 Hanson Street. John Frosco, West Palm Beach Code, chronic nuisance. This property was declared a chronic nuisance on February 7th of 2020, and a certified mail was sent out. There was no response from the owner and no um, action plan submitted. Uh, certified mail was sent out for the notice of hearing, notice of violation on February 29th of 2020, and the property was posted the same day. So the city is asking the magistrate to formally declare this a chronic nuisance and enter a service order allowing for an abatement, cutting, cleaning, boarding and securing. This is an occupied property. Okay. All right, well, I do find proper notice with this case. Uh, based on the testimony and the evidence, I will uphold the city's declaration of chronic nuisance, authorize the city to provide chronic nuisance services to the property, enter the property, abate the health, safety, and welfare violations, and assess the costs. Thank you. Matter number 18, CE 20020134322 322 Alamar Road. John Frasco, West Palm Beach Code. This property was declared a chronic nuisance on February 20, 20th of 2020. I beg your pardon. It was declared a chronic nuisance on February 7th of 2020, and the property was posted that day, and certified mail was sent out uh, February 10th of 2020. There has been um, contact with the owner of this property, um, but no action plan. It's just stating his physical condition and his inability to comply the property. Um, chronic nuisance manager Laura, Laura Borso sent out a letter um, with applications for different aids that the community offers, paint your home and so on, different avenues. Never respond to that, never took advantage of that. This property magistrate is a filthy mess. Uh, it's unkind of me to say so, but that's what it is. It's based on a former case of, of non-adjudication back in 2018. The city is asking you to formally declare this a chronic nuisance and enter a service order to abate, cutting, cleaning, boarding, securing, whatever is needed to keep the property compliant. All right, thank you. Uh, I do find proper notice. Uh, I do um, uphold the city's declaration of chronic nuisance authorized the city to provide chronic nuisance services to the property, enter and abate the health, safety, and welfare violations and assess the costs. Matter number 19, CE 20023435365 Hampton Road. John Frosco, West Palm Beach Code. This property was declared a chronic nuisance on February 21st of 2020. The property was posted that day and certified mail was sent out 224 of, uh, 221 of 2020. There was an email sent to me by the owner of the property um, that it really wasn't an action plan that was stating their position, and a copy of that is in the file. Um, I responded to that very specifically about what's needed to bring the property into code compliance and what's needed you know, for the action plan. I did not get a response from that point. Um, this was based on a case of, uh, actually two cases of adjudicated non-compliance. So notice of hearing was sent out, notice of violation, and that was um, posted on February 29th of 2020 and certified mail was sent the same day. And um, the property today Grass is kind of mowed, but not really, and um, the landscape is in poor condition. We do ask, and it's an occupied property, we do ask that the magistrate declare this a chronic nuisance and enter a service order against the property to cut and clean, board and secure, whatever is needed, not limited to, and build back to the owner. So after the email, um, emails were passed back and forth, one email he emailed you, me you, they emailed you and you emailed back and you never heard anything i never past. heard anything past that point and the only thing that happened was that, it, that was on the 23rd of march okay. that he emailed me and on the 25th of march i emailed him back 
and I, and I sort of outlined, because I can't write it for him, I outlined and tried to steer him in the right direction so that he could give me a sufficient action plan. Which did not happen. It did not happen. Okay. And there was minimal, like you said, they mowed the grass one time. Yeah, I, it's a very odd situation. Every time I would just buy, go by by a routine inspection, the grass would still be overgrown. They may do a little string trimming here and there, mm. but not mowed like a regular lawn. You know, parts of the lawn and areas are really overgrown. Like you could see on the, the, the west side of the fence, how it's overgrown. The parkway is overgrown. They tried to plant some hedges in the front, but then they didn't maintain those either, and they're dying. Okay. It would have been right. nice, eventually, it would have been nice to have contact with the owner and try to get them in the right direction, but didn't happen. All right. Well, I will find proper notice in this case. I will uh, uphold the city's declaration of chronic nuisance, authorize city to provide chronic nuisance services, enter the property, abate the health, safety, welfare violations, and assess the costs. Matter number 20, CE 20030002, 1331 North Mangonia Drive. John Frosco, West Palm Beach Code. This property was cited, declared a chronic nuisance on March 2nd of 2020 and posted that day. Certified mail was sent out that day. I have had no response from the owner of the property. The conditions have not changed as far as the uh, former violation the overgrowth, the trash debris, the hurricane hazards, which was based on the case, uh, prior case of adjudicated non-compliance. So this is the vacant? It's a vacant lot. It it's, um, abuts the Lake Mangonia. What do they need to do to bring this into, or what needs to be done to bring this in? Well, they need to give me an action plan so that they I guess, yeah, I guess what, activity. What would the action plan need to contain, in other words, to... To cut, to, on a regular basis, cut and clean the property, trim the trees, and remove the debris. Okay. It, this would be a very simple action plan um, that we would be requesting, but had no contact with the owner. And t what was the prior case or cases? It was for a basic cut and clean of the property and hurricane hazards, which would be the, the, um, the trees with the dead vegetation. All right. Um, in this case, I will find proper notice. I will um, uphold the city's declaration of chronic nuisance, authorize the city to provide services, enter the property, abate those violations, and assess the costs. Thank Matter you. number 21, CE 2003-0342-210 Miramar Way. Last one. Uh, John Frosco, West Palm Beach Code, Chronic Nuisance, 210 Miramar Way. Um, it's a bank-owned property. Uh, I have had contact with the property management team. Uh, to give you a little background, I had cited this prior for a chronic nuisance based on a non-adjudicated case, and they hired a company, a contract company, to come in and pull permits and rehab the property. So I closed that case based on the fact that I think that they were moving in the right direction and doing what they needed to do. They put the property up for sale, that didn't happen. They withdrew the for sale for whatever reason, so I recited it for a chronic nuisance under a new case. And that was done March 18th of 2020. The property was posted March 19th of 2020. And certified mail was sent out March 19th of 2020. So in the interim, I heard from the, um, the save, they call it a save your homes department, and, um, which is they link with another company and they're based out of Georgia. I did send an email to her. I did send it to the Beverly Freeman was her name and, and showed pictures of the condition of the property and what's not done and what needs to be done. The only thing that they did was the pool. Other than the pool, um, I guess they have somebody now and then going out to mow the lawn, but not doing anything else. No action plan was submitted and only really partial compliance with what was needed from the start. Currently, the property is out of compliance. It's only, the front yard is only mowed. The backyard is, there's overgrowth, there's vegetative debris and, and so on. And this was based on a prior adjudicated case of non-compliance back in 2019. Um, additionally, in the interim of all of this, they also put an, uh, a sign out for lease. And you know, prior to advertising for 
business, you have to have a license in place, which was explained to them, but it's still out there and they're still advertising for lease. So in other words, the property has complied partially for cutting, but then it's increased in violation in not following the city's rules. So we're asking that you formally declare this a um, chronic nuisance property and enter a service order allowing the city to abate for services cutting, cleaning, board and secure, pool cleaning, not lim but not limited to that. And all costs be billed back to the owner. Okay. Uh, I do find proper notice. I will uh, uphold the city's declaration of chronic nuisance authorized city to provide services, enter the property, abate the violations, and assess the cost. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna jump to other matters. I think we, we still have a couple of... Uh... Uh-uh. I'm like a lot. I'm 22. I literally only have like three. I think we only have uh, 22 and 23, 23 and 26 and 27. And 26. Yeah, let's just go through the regular finish. We only have a couple cases. Let's Six finish those. Life. Matter number 22, CE 2002 920th Street. What's 22? 920th Street. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Cassandra St. Hilaire, um, code enforcement with the city of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on February 14th. Certified mail was signed for on May 23rd. The property was also posted June 5th. I've had no contact with the property owner. Um, the property was cited for 18103B, 18103E, 18103J, 18106A, 18106B, 18265, 74-4C3, and 78-6. Um, the property has complied with 74-4C3 and 1806 B. Um, for all remaining violations, the city is requesting an additional 60 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Okay. Thank you, I will find proper notice with the certified mail and with the posting uh, based on the testimony and the photographic evidence, I will find the property has complied with 74-4C3 and 18106B, but remains in violation of the other code sections cited in the notice. I'll accept the city's recommendation for an additional 60 days to comply. Thereafter, daily fines of $100 per day will be assessed until compliance is achieved. Matter number 23, CE 2002321-2100A, E. Isaacs Avenue. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on February 20th. Certified mail was signed for on May 23rd. I've had no contact with the property owner. The property was cited for 18106A, 34102B, 94273D31B3, and 9447B1. The property has complied with 34102B. At this time, the city is requesting an additional 30 days or $100 per day until compliance is achieved. All right, so the, the, oh, I forgot something. Did I forget? No. So it's no longer an inoperative vehicle, but it still has to be moved. Yeah, they, yeah. because it's commercial. And, mm -hmm. Okay, and then and the um, home advertisement. Okay. Okay, understood. Um, I will find proper notice uh, in this case based on the testimony and the evidence. I will find the property has complied with Code Section 34102B, but remains in violation of the other sections cited in the notice. I'll accept the city's recommendation, allow an additional 30 days for compliance with the outstanding violations, thereafter assess daily fines of $100 per day until compliance is achieved. Matter number 26, CE 2004-0048-1320 North Mangonia Drive. Cassandra St. Hilaire, Code Enforcement Officer with the City of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on April 9th. Certified mail was, was signed for on April 10th. The property and City Hall were posted um, April 20th. I've had contact with the property owner. This property was cited for 94446-2C3. Um, because the, uh, the tree was improperly pruned, there is really no way to reach compliance. So at this time, the city is requesting a one-time fine of $250. 
the, for is the tree it abuse. Back? Uh, it's coming back, but they can't remove. We really can't have them remove it because when you remove a tree, you're supposed to replace it, and you can't replace it in the swell area. No, I thought I saw a picture with some leaves at the top. Yeah, it was. Co it's coming back, but it's improperly coming back. Yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, I do find proper notice uh, with the signed certified mail. Uh, I do find property um, violated 94446-2C3. I will assess the one-time $250 fine. Matter number 27, CE 1013 Palm Beach Lakes Boulevard. Cassandra St. Hilaire, code enforcement officer with the city of West Palm Beach. This property was cited on May 8th, certified mail was sent on May 13th. The property and City Hall were also posted on June 5th. I've had no contact with the property owner. This property was cited for 18106A, 18106B, 74-483, 74-4C3, and 74-4C5. All violations still remain. Um, at this time, the city is requesting an additional 15 days or an order for a debate, in order to abate. All right, I do find proper notice with uh, the posting and the certified mail based on the testimony and the photographs. I do find the property remains in violation as cited. I'll accept the city's recommendation. I'll allow an additional 15 days for the respondents to comply thereafter the city is authorized to enter the property and abate the health, safety, welfare violations uh, and assess the cost. And for the record, based on the photographs, I do find that the condition of the property is a threat to the public health, safety, and welfare. Thank you. Okay. Other matter, number six, CE 11030518201 South Sequoia Drive. Let me go ahead. Um, anybody who wasn't here this morning when I placed uh, the first round of uh, folks here under oath, I, uh, let me swear you in if you're going to be speaking to me. Um, if you haven't already been placed under oath, please stand and raise your right hands. Thank you. Do each of you swear or affirm under penalties of perjury that your testimony today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You can all have a seat. Um, <laughs> When your case is called, come up on up to the podium to my right. Uh, the city will give me some background information on the, on the case. Um, you may have a recommendation, then I will hear from you. You can tell me uh, what you're uh, looking for in terms of uh, the reduction and the circumstances, and then uh, I will enter an order after I've heard everything from both sides. So, uh, Mr. Posner, let's uh, go ahead. Okay. Am I correct? This is for 201 South Sequoia? Yes. 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 Okay. The Good. same applicant is for 148 South Robbins. If we want to do that together, which what's the other one? Oh, 148 Madden South Robbins. Six and se tab agenda item six and seven. Yeah. I'll take a word for that. 201 South Sequoia and 148 South Robbins. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm with you. Case ending in 518 201 South Sequoia. Date ordered 720 2011. Fine started 1020 2011. Ran for 882 days. Total $44,100, $50 a day. Date of compliance, 320 of 14. Uh, this is new owner. Uh, new owner city is asking for 25% on that. The other case ending in 017 from 148 South Robbins. Date order 27 of 18. Fine started 218 of 18. Ran for 151 days, $15,100 and $100 a day. Date of compliance is 719 of 18. Uh, this is the same owner. There's been 12 cases under this owner. Um, there were seven total properties we had to check under this owner just to get to this hearing. All totaled under their ownership, we're talking 38 cases in his case history. Uh, the only reason this is even coming before us now is it crossed attached to a property they're selling in Lantana, or they wouldn't have even come to us to try and resolve this. Uh, frankly, it's... Um, the, the representative for them is the realtor involved in that sale who's been mon monumental in getting this to a hearing, but this really hasn't been much effort on the owner. The city's asking for 50% on that one. Okay. 
else I haven't seen up on it. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, John Scalia. Um, basically, like he said. Sorry, I'm, I, I'm John Scalia. Thank you, sir. Uh, basically, like he said, we're selling a property, and I'm doing a lot of work. The corporation is in California. Um, it's a big corporation where they probably just it fell through the cracks. They didn't know. Um, I wanted to sell this, so I do a lot of legwork, and with the help of everybody, we did pretty good to get here. And uh, I would like to get it a little lower so I can get the fines paid, release the property to sell in Lantana. All the properties are in compliance, so you know we yep. can do what we can. All right, I appreciate that. Anything else from the city on either of uh, these? He's right. The corporation is in California. Thirty-eight cases on five properties since 2014. Essentially, the city's been their property manager. Are you already aware of the city's position on that? Okay. Okay. Um, in the case ending in 518, that's the 201 South Sequoia, Sequoia Drive address. Um, based on testimony and the evidence I've heard, I'll, I will agree to uh, reduce the lien from the 44100 uh, to $7,000 payable. Can you do that in 30 days? And then on the... Um, 148 South Robbins Drive, which is the case ending in 017. I'll reduce that to $5,000, also payable within 30 days. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Do you want to get orders? There's one. Sorry. Other matter number two, CE 0604-0574-511-46th Street. Case ending in 574 511 46th Street. Date ordered 72806. Fine started 815 of 06. 1,147 days. Total is $286,750. $250 a day. Date of compliance 105 of 09. Uh, same owner, normally under those circumstances, we'd ask for 50%, but we're reducing the ask to 30% based on the size of the, the lien. Um, this was for no rental license, or for expired rental license. They were cited three times after this case, again, for no rental license, among 20 times cited for this property. Um, the only mitigating factor on the application is we didn't know about it, but says they were very responsive to city requirements after 2009. Um, but after 2009 was 10 of the 20 times that they were cited, again, including three times for the same expired rental license. So we do not agree that that was responsive, 30%. Yes, ma'am. Hello. I'm Joyce Schneider. I'm one of the owners with my brother for Kerwin LLC. Okay. And in 2000, so the reason we found out about this is I'm selling the house. And when my attorney did the lien search, she said, Joyce, there's a lien from 2006 for no business license. And I know it sounds terrible. I didn't know about it. I did not know about it. 
So I went in and I went on the, the page where all the, where the code violations are and it said that there was a registered letter sent to that property in 2006 and returned to sender and I never heard ever again. Now Officer Levine, I thought he would be here, I've been speaking with him, he um, in 2009 is when I found out about this. I immediately ran up to Maggie Cruz and paid the 9150, okay? And then Officer Levine came over and we did the, I always keep the house beautiful, so. Wait, what, what is it that you, you just? My, uh, the rental license. Oh, okay. And they said I needed someone that lived in West Palm Beach. So the tenant at that time was so nice and he said, Joyce, I could be your, you know, God forbid I get a, a letter or anything. Okay, so I put him in with his driver's license and I paid. And then Officer Levine came. Now, over the course, I was always in touch with him. I have emails and like if he saw a weather stripping around a window, I would get it fixed immediately. And I have copies of what he's saying, 12. Three quarters of them are rubbish from the landscapers and he just closed the case immediately. Whenever there was anything wrong, I ran up there. I'm like crazy with that house, it's so pretty. And, but tenants would leave garbage cans out and I'd go nuts and I'd run up there and Officer Levine would close it. So it sounds like it's terrible that there's 12 cases, but they, oh, if you open them up, they're all tr uh, rubbish left from the landscaper. And whenever there was anything wrong with the house, there were windows he didn't like and wood rot. I have permits. Oh, and then finding this out, but the windows I had permitted in 2010, he never closed the permit. So I had to deal with that, which I didn't know, but we got it closed. They're perfect. And um, so, oh, always. And the business licenses, I went then again in 2009, in October, and I said, please, to the lady, she was so nice. I'd always run up here. I wouldn't even just do it online. I said, do I, anything, is everything, all well, permits? Yes, Joyce, no balance. Everyone said everything was fine. No one's ever, even Officer Levine, he's so nice. I wish he was here. He never told me all those years that I had this lien. I just found out about it. I, I passed out when she, when she told me. And I have... It really sounds, I, I want, look, I have emails and I met Officer Levine so many times. He's called me, Joyce, come on up. Um, uh, you need to paint the weather, the weather stripping on the door, fix the glass, like little things. The place is beautiful. Oh, there, it's so pretty. I just met Officer Thompson. I was missing um, uh, my letters. He, it couldn't be just be on the mailbox, so I put it on the house. And um, months ago, he said, Joyce, you can't have uh, gravel on the driveways. So I just paid 6,500 for beautiful pavers and, and the new roof I'm putting on just for the new owner. Yeah. And, that, and everything I do is permitted. So it just sounds terrible, but I did not know. And I, I hate to say those words, but I am so sorry. I would have taken care of the $66. This is like, and they all know me. I, I, this, is how, this is my original folder. Look how many times I was up there. Maggie Cruz, Angela Jones, uh, Kevin Levine, I saw him all the time. And no one ever told me I had a previous, and he said, well, they probably didn't look in the computer. But I didn't know how to look in the computer at that point to find it. And it's not like we're making money on this house. I've lost, it's, I don't want to talk about money, but to say 30%, I'm dying. I can't believe this. Is this a, his, I'm just curious, a historic? Yes, it is. And the new owner, the buyer. the buyer, I meant, the new buyer, he's been so wonderful. We had to keep extending, obviously, with COVID, and we were supposed to close in March. And he's going to redo it historically. He's met with, and lived, and lived there, yes, with builders, and he's studied the historic, you know, the Wayne's, everything on it, and he's going to move in. And <sighs> is it under contract? It, it was, and but he did extend it with us. May I speak to them? 
Council, yes, please. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Um, Cynthia Reed, um, I'm um, the Let me attorney. get you closer to the microphone. Thank you so, so, so much. Cynthia Reed, I'm the attorney for Kerwin LLC, and also um, my firm is doing the closing. Um, it's, uh, it's under contract uh, to be sold for $260,000. Um, the young man is getting a mortgage. Um, he was kind enough to give us an extension till the end of this month so that we could get this resolved. Um, uh, it's absolutely accurate um, what um, Ms. Schneider, may I call her Joyce, what she says. I've known her for many years. Um, when I found out about this, when doing the title examination, I immediately contacted her about it. Matter of fact, I also believe I spoke to, I believe that's Ms. Monique Williams there? Mm -hmm. No, not Monique Williams, I'm that's, sorry. That's Monique, who we've talked to. Okay. Um, at any rate, uh, just to check and see um, what you know what the status was. So, um, uh, unfortunately, we were delayed uh, substantially by the COVID situation. Um, but let me just say, it's it's under contract. He did extend. He wants the property very desperately. The property is under contract to sell sell for two hundred sixty thousand. It was purchased in 2004 for 195000 and it has a mortgage on it, which a purchase money mortgage, which they took out in 2004 to purchase it for $156,000. Um, when I looked at the title exam, I did note that I almost, I said to myself, it's too bad they didn't do a refinance, mm -hmm. because if they had done a refinance after the uh, claim of, after the lien, um, was um, recorded in 2006, October 2006. I said it's too bad that they didn't refinance because it would have been caught in that title search because of the, again, um, um, I'm going to speak for um, my client and say that um, she uh, is, she really did, um, was flabbergasted and floored by this. Um, we know that to say we didn't know is not like you know, wipes everything away. But she absolutely is very sorry for the situation having occurred. Also that she meant no disrespect to the city of West Palm Beach or code compliance or the ordinances, that she understands her obligations and that although she may not be perfect, that she does have a history, especially with the personal dealings with Inspector or Officer Levine. Um, uh, 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 and if I'm if I'm not mistaken, and she can correct me, um, Your Honor, she can correct me. Um, I believe there were several instances where the um, officer mentioned that in pr in years after that, that there was a lack of a business license. I believe the situation was that it was told you that you didn't have one and then you contacted yes, the office you contacted the office and said yes I, I did have one and I they would look could that. you explain would you uh, would also, you hear her on that oh, is yeah, yes. I will. Sorry. thank you um, I have that in here but with all the 12 I just can I go to that first sure first one complaint it recorded by M Carmen no violation found so he closed it complaint recorded by B Carmen Case closed by Officer Levine. Nothing found. These are all he, that it sounds like I'm like. I, I get it. Do I, you, they, I have them all here. There's, and then I have two business licenses, as you just said, that he says I didn't have, and I had. And then case was closed. So that's on there. I have them all. Look, he puts no business license. But I got it in March. And then May says I don't have one. And I run up there. The girl, they thought I was crazy because I'm constantly, I'm a nervous person. I really am. I have to totally admit. So I wouldn't do it online and I'd run up and talk to Beth Carmen. And, but he kept, they kept saying, look, no business license. May 28th, I had all these. And so it was, okay. I, I'm sorry, I don't know who this is, but I've been speaking with Officer Levine and Officer Thompson. They all know me. I'm, I run up. I live um, south on Hillsborough Beach. Oh, and most of them are like the tenants would not park on the paved. See, look, no violations found. No viol people. Somebody was calling. Um, he closed everything immediately without even calling me. I didn't even know half of these. Um, uh, trash deb debris. If you look through them, you will see it's. They're all nothing. No violation found. They're all no violation found. Maybe two or three, and I took care of it. Okay. And I'd run up and say to the tenants, please, you're leaving the garbage can. And they're, I'm getting fined for the garbage can. You know, I'll get fined. And then, and truthfully, then maybe it would happen again. And the tenants just wouldn't park where I said. And 
you know, that's, that's all. All right, no, I, I, thank, I appreciate you um, explaining all that. Anything else, um, Council, that you wanted to add before I go back to the city? Um, I'm not at this time. Okay. Mr. Posner? Uh, the the city doesn't doubt that she wasn't aware of it. Um, this is the first we heard of the rental license cases being closed with no violation noted. That's very unusual. Can but all these it? other cases of prohibited vehicles, improper containment, uh, broken windows, trash and debris, and all these times that she spoke to Kevin Levine to fix something is the city notifying her because we're managing the property. Um, and again, that's not something, not the position the city is supposed to be in. Uh, so it really doesn't change the city's ask of 30%. Okay. Thank you. Uh, May I ask what it means shot? by that? I don't know what you mean by that. If something was wrong, it's it, I, I it's the it can I respond to that? I, I get it. Okay, no. so the good news for you guys, no matter what I do, just by virtue of <laughs> the size of your lien God. compared to everything else on the agenda, you get the biggest reduction of the day, <laughs> just by virtue of what else of, is on of the, the amount. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. I, I could go with the city's recommendation, and you still get the biggest reduction of the day. Just because yes. nobody else has a lien even close to yours on yes, today's sir. agenda. All, all that being said, I, I appreciate the city's position. I appreciate um, what you've told me. And given the circumstances, um, I am going to uh, reduce th this lien. This lien is $286,750. Um, I'm going to reduce that to $8,600, which is so about 3% instead of 30%. Oh, my God. So thank you so much. Payable within 30 days. Yes, I'll yes, do sir. it now. Yes, sir. I think the better to be a oh. cashier's check oh, okay. unless they have another requirement. All right. well, thank, thank, you, thank you, ladies. So thank much. you so much. It. Thank you, okay. officer. On the bottom, it tells you how to remit payment, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Other matter number one, CE 18040036-3104 Kingston Court. Are you ready? Case ending in 036-3104 Kingston Court. Date ordered 620 of 18. Fine started 71 of 18. Ran for 318 days. Total 31,800. $100 a day, date of compliance, 515 of 19. Same owner, city's asking for 30%. Mitigation is, didn't receive the notice, but it was sent to the correct PAPA address, which is this, the same address they have on PAPA today. Um, and it was one of two times they were cited for expired rental license. 30%. Thank you. Yes, Good sir. morning, Steve Zimmerman. I'm the attorney representing the property owner. We have also the property manager here. Uh, similar to the last case that just came up, uh, this is a situation where the property owner was unaware of this violation until they did a lien search in connection with the sale of the property. Okay, uh, We found that there's a problem with the notice here. Um, they say that the, the, they were, we were given proper notice. The notice, and in fact, still listed as the address for this property is 2875 Northeast 191st Street, Suite 801 Miami, Florida. Okay, that's the address that, at which they provided the notices, and uh, it's still the address that they're listing today. Uh, I don't know where that address came from, but it is not the address of the property owner. Um, what I, I have a, 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 an idea of what I think happened. Okay, and I think the city made a mistake. Um, the address that they used was the address for this corporate for this LLC approximately 10 years ago when the corporation or the LLC was first formed. When the entity was formed, it was formed by an attorney in Miami and he used his address as the address for the corporation. And that was on the original corporate charter filed in 2011. That was immediately changed on SunBiz, and if you go on SunBiz, you could see that in 2012 it was changed. Uh, in 2018, when this case started, 
The address was Phoenix Management Services, LLC, 17103 North Bay Road, Suite A509, Sunny Isles Beach, Florida, 33160. Uh, that was the address based upon the SunBiz records, uh, effective as of the previous filing, which would have been February 21st, 2018. I have copies of everything here. And you can kind of see what happened if this is in fact what happened. If you look at the charter filed in 2011, and if somebody accidentally looked at the charter rather than the current record, they would have found the address, which is the 2875 address. But you can't look at an address that was on the charter two, you know, 10 years ago. You've got to look at the current address. The current address shows what the current address is. Can I, can I show you this? You may. Um, I'll take a look at that. Okay. But, I mean, yeah, let me you know. I'm very, so I appreciate all that, but that, that is, in my view, not the city's issue. That is the property owner's issue because under the law, the city is required to provide notice at the address contained on the tax collector or property appraiser's records, and that's exactly what the city did. Well, again, so. okay, I understand, but the fact is that, that that was not the address, and so that they never received notice. Immediately upon receiving notice, the, the situation was corrected. Huh. They have always maintained a license. Uh, I think there was a slight period when it was um, not in effect, but as soon as we found out about it, it was immediately corrected, immediately, and been maintained ever since. Um, and so there was a, a problem with, with the notice. I, I, you know, I, I realize what, what the city's position is in terms of providing notice. Um, the, the, the SunBiz information is, is, a, is publicly available. I don't know how the address um, uh, of 2875 got put in there, uh, but I, it was incorrect. It wasn't the address. It was an address of someone who I was, get it. And was I, and 10 I, years before. I accept all that. I'm so the just, reality is we never got notice of this. I, I, get, I'll, okay? I, I understand that. And as soon as they did get notice of it, they immediately corrected it. And, and I, I, I agree with, uh, I accept that, but what you need to, or your client needs to understand is, again, that's not the city's problem. That's the property owner's problem is to keep the information accurate with the tax collector and the property appraiser. The city is not legally obligated to go searching SunBiz records. I understand, records, and so. I don't know what, what, the, what the address was in so, terms of the uh, So all I'm saying is I, I disagree that it was any, that, that the city did anything wrong here. I don't think, this, I well, think the it, city followed the law. It, it may be that they did, uh, but it's certainly a mitigating factor. The reality is that we don't have any notice of this, and the reason was because the address that okay, was and used was an address which we don't sure. have any communication with. I get that. With. And so we think that that's a mitigating factor. Um, you know, as, as a result, we don't think there should be any fine because there was immediate compliance upon discovery, and, um, and so we're asking for a complete mitigation, but certainly th th there's facts which, which justify it. Now, the property uh, manager is here. She's prepared to testify to what I said if you need that. I have no reason to, okay. to dis dispute anything All you've right. said. Let me... Uh... Go back to this. Uh, see the only part of that that I would have disputed you already did. Um, I'd just like to also point out that they're taking care of this now that the property is up for sale listed at $202,000, appraised at $148,000. Huh. The city's ask remains 30%. Okay. Um, so the current lien in this case is $31,800. Uh, I will agree to reduce that to $1,200 payable within 30 days. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me. Matter number three, CE one four zero eight zero two one zero ten seventeen Upland. Good morning, Magistrate. Case ending in 210-1017, Upland Road. 
Date ordered 924 of 14, fine started 1015 of 14. Uh, ran for 1,686 days, total 84,300. $50 a day, date of compliance 528 of 19. New owner, uh, history under them is uh, three cases. Uh, the application mentions that they completely remodeled, but they've been doing that since 2018 and simply keep extending permits. So I, I guess they're in the process of still remodeling. Uh, cities ask, as a new owner, is just 25%. Yes, sir. Hello, uh, Richard Carey on behalf of the property owner uh, for 1017 Upland. Uh, this property, as uh, the code officer stated, Mr. Posner stated that this was purchased back in 2017. Um, the property has been in the process of being remodeled. Uh, the, the biggest issue is they had an issue with the contractor who was responsible for the remodel, which caused a severe delay in the remodel, which permits got closed out, so permits had to be reopened. Uh, the property owner, uh, has been consistently working with the city whenever there was any sort of notif notification regarding a new violation the property owner uh, went to cure that violation um, as quickly and swiftly as possible this, this application uh, for the lien reduction actually was put in you know over a year ago and that's but because a new violation came up which the, the homeowner wasn't aware of um, it actually caused the application to get kicked out However, the property, we have pictures here of what it looked like before and what it looks like now. You can see a substantial change has been made um, by the homeowner, um, causing the you know, beautification of the city. What was the uh, investment to um, rehabilitate this property? Um, I just spoke with him. I asked him. He spent about 160000 so far um, on the rehabilitation. It's still underway? Um, you're, what, 98% yeah. done? No, we have already called in. I need you to come up to the microphone, oh, yeah. sir, and uh, tell, me, yes, and tell me your name and address. Yes, we, uh, we have already, the new contractor has already called in for the final inspection. And I just, again, your name? Your I'm, name. I'm, I'm sorry, Sayad Raja. <laughs> I apologize, I couldn't hear. That's okay. And you are the owner? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much, sir. All right. So yes, the, we're just waiting, and of course, with all the COVID stuff, um, that's what's caused kind of a delay with the final inspections on this property. Understood. All right, thank you. Yeah. Anything else from the city on uh, this one? The city doesn't dispute anything they, they say at all, other than to point out once again that saying that the owner fixed everything as soon as the city told them about it is the city managing the property. All right, thank you. Um, all right, so in this case, the current lien is $84,300. I'll agree to reduce that to $4,500 payable within 30 days. Yes, okay. thank you. Good. Done. Okay. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Other matter number four, CE 18100201311 Forest Hill Boulevard. Case ending in 201311 Forest Hill Boulevard. Date order 125 of 18. Fine started 24 of 19. Ran for 81 days. Total is $4,050. Ran $50 a day. Date of compliance 426 of 19. The applicant is the previous owner, but the same owner that incurred the violation. Um, mitigating factor was the co owner who caused the violation is deceased. Uh, being same owner cities ask is, is a standard 30%. Thank you. Got it. <coughs> yes, sir. Uh, good morning. Uh, John Bernasali, I'm here on behalf of the uh, James Bowers and the deceased mother, Maxine. I need you to speak closer into the oh, microphone, sorry. please. I can't um, have trouble hearing you. So, um, um, Maxine Walden, 
Uh, what happened in this case is that Maxine Walden was uh, 100 years old. She was living in the house. Uh, her son was a co-owner. He's no spring chicken himself. He lives in New York. Uh, she fell. She could no longer live in the house. She intended to come back, but she never did. Uh, so she was living in a nursing home. Um, the violation apparently occurred sometime in October. Um, she had a yard guy, uh, who had, uh, Mr. Wells, who had done the work on this property for over 30 years. Um, what happened is that he con contracted, we found out later on, that he contracted skin cancer and basically quit working. He tried to sell his business, couldn't do it. So there was nobody knew anything about what was going on with this property. The son in New York, he had all the mail changed to his house, but for some reason this notice never got to him. Um, but uh, so they never knew that this violation had, was going on. Um, um, the, uh, well, the son found out about it in February. Uh, I think February the 2nd, a neighbor, February the 4th, a neighbor uh, had mailed him a copy of the notice that was on the door. He immediately tried to contact Mr. Wells to see what was going on. Uh, found out that Mr. Wells was no longer doing any work and had ceased doing business as a yard guy. Um, so, and a maintenance guy. So uh, he then hired people and this thing was fixed in, in April of uh, 2019. So as soon as they found out about it, I said, uh, Mr. Bowers is 80 years old himself at the time. So he's not, couldn't just come down here and, and do it. So he had to find somebody over the telephone. He had, everything was done by phone. And I think if you look at the, uh, uh, the communications that he had starting in February with the city, the, the inspectors details, he was, communicating with the city on this thing, trying to get this thing resolved, which he, eventually it was resolved. Huh. The property has since been sold, but you know, we're trying to clean up this mess. All right, um, thank you. Is anything else from the city? Uh, yeah, only, I don't believe he gave his name, so I'm not sure who's representing the property. Oh, uh, J John Bernasali, okay. I'm the attorney for. <clears throat> All right, um, in this case, the current lien is $4,050. Uh, I will agree to reduce that to $500 payable within 30 days. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Other matter number five, CE 1905-0009-847, Selkirk Street. Case ending in 009, 847 Selkirk Street, date ordered 6-5 of 19, fine started 12-3 of 19, ran for 52 days. Total $5,200, $100 a day, date of compliance 124 of 20. It is the same owner. The mitigating factors is it took longer than expected. Um, they were given six months at the original hearing. Um, they also advised they already had open permits for the issue, but all their open permits at the time were for interior work, and all the violations were actually exterior violations. They were, weren't applied for until well after the, the, the case itself. City's asking for 30%. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm Carmen Goyos, and uh, this is, uh, she'll get her name, Nereida Laibinot. She's the, owner of the, she's the owner of the property. Okay. And I'm going to interpret for her. And I was around when all of this happened, so I can help her to explain. Okay. And I probably need whoever is going to be verbal to be closer to the microphone so that I can sure. hear you. No yes. Thank um, you. So go ahead and tell me. Um, um, she pulled, uh, this happened when Hurricane Maria, and the house was destroyed inside. So she, it was unlivable, and she was uh, battling with the insurance company. Um, I have pictures of all the mold and everything inside had to be removed and she continued to battle with them and while she was battling she was living in the garage because there was no place for her to live and the insurance company was not paying for her to live anywhere. So she had to um, tear out the entire inside of the house and I have pictures of all of that and redo the house and she did open permits for the interior at that time because that's what she was doing. Um, the inspector that came by did not know that she had permits at the time. 
I, ex I spoke to him myself and explained to him that she had turpins. He, said, he didn't know that. He said, no problem. I'll go and speak to the judge. I'll give her how much time do you think you need? And I said, what's well, gonna take about another six months for her to get everything because it's a lot of work. It was the roof, the ceilings, the floor, the bathrooms, and he was fine with that. Six months later, um, she was almost done with everything. She had not finished, of course, when she got another, um, I guess, violation for the exterior of the house, which she doesn't know all of the laws that we have here. And uh, so immediately upon knowing that, she went and got more permits for the exterior of the house. Um, when she started doing the exterior of the house, which they had asked for certain things, then they asked her to remove the asbestos on the entire outside of the house. At the same time, she's fighting with the insurance company. She's doing this out of her own money, her own pocket, and she's a single mother. Uh, she lives in her ho this home with her daughter and her, grand her granddaughter, her daughter and her, gra and her mother. And uh, at that time, she was not working, so she was trying to get the funds. Her daughter was working to help her with these things. Um, so she had to get remove the asphalt. That's, this was in December, six months afterwards, the inside was done. Then there was a leak on the side of the house from, and again, she had to go back to the insurance company. I have a letter from the insurance company where they asked her not to close everything down because she had to leave it open so they could come and debate whether or not they were gonna pay for the repairs. Yeah. So she had to leave it open. But again, they fined her because she had not finished the work. They asked her to remove um, um, the wood, the rotten wood outside. When she started removing the asbestos, she found that the rotten wood was more than she thought it was. So again, she had to extend it, and it took her longer to be able to afford to fix it. Everything has been fixed, the landscaping, the wood, um, entirely. Everything has been done. I have pictures to show you. And you know, here we are where she cannot afford to pay these types of fees. You know? okay. And she has complied, and she's tried to keep up with everything they've asked for. Yep, no, I understand, and you wouldn't be here if it wasn't in compliance. So um, let me just ask the city, do you have any... Uh, any? I, I believe part of that is confusing two different issues. Uh, it sounds like somebody was there previously on the interior issues. Probably a building inspector, because we don't deal with that as much. Um, but this case itself, they, they were given the six months, and I can understand why they took too long, but again, the city's only asking for 30%. All right. Well, in this case, the lien is $5,200. Uh, I'll agree to reduce that to $500, payable within 30 days. Is it possible to bring it down any further than that? I can give you more time, but I think $500 is the appropriate number. Okay, if you could give her more time. Um, is, is 90 days enough time? Dias. Three months? Dias, dias. Yes, that would be right. 90, days. 90 days. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Appreciate it. Uh, anything else? Uh, looks like we covered the agenda. We good? All right, then it's uh, 11.25. We stand adjourned.